Hi there, this is Callan Bentley. Welcome back for another Smart Figure. After watching this video, you should be able to identify, name, and describe the formation of a bunch of different depositional glacial landforms. These are glacial landforms that occur in areas of continental glaciation. Now, if you want to see where continental glaciation is taking place today, you've got basically two big options, Greenland and Antarctica. These two locations are the only places on Earth today where there are ice sheets. However, if you were to go back in time to around 18,000 years ago, you'd find that there were several other major ice sheets, including one that covered most of North America and others in Siberia and Northern Europe. These ice sheets leave behind characteristic landforms that we refer to as depositional landforms because they're made out of glacial sediment. So you can see here over on the far right, there's an end moraine, which marks the furthest point that the glacier made it out to. So we can call this a terminal end moraine. If the glacier retreats a bit, it can leave behind a recessional end moraine as well. And then it can retreat some more and leave behind this big area of ground moraine, which has various landforms in it. You can see some caves here, little uh, piles of till. There are braided rivers crossing this landscape. There are even the casts of old rivers that ran through the glacier. These are referred to as eskers. They look kind of like long snakes crossing the landscape. And there are also drumlins. Uh, drumlins uh, have a big upside down spoon kind of shape one side and gentler on the other. Here's an example from New York State near Rochester. You can see that there's a bunch of drumlins there. Here's a topographic map depicting those drumlins. Notice how on their northern end they have very closely spaced contour lines and that indicates that that's a very steep section. Whereas on the southern portion, the contour lines are more widely spaced apart, and that indicates that it's more gently sloping there. That's basically a way to read ancient ice direction. In this case, the ice was flowing from the north towards the south. Another feature that we discussed were end moraines. Here's a look at the American Midwest. There's two generations of end moraines depicted on this map an earlier generation in purple, and then that's mostly overprinted by a younger generation, which is shown here in red. Notice that the younger generation tends to parallel the shapes of the Great Lakes. So the shorelines of the Great Lakes are matched by end moraines that are recessional end moraines. So the Great Lakes were carved out, in fact, by glaciers, lobes of that great continental ice sheet. End moraines can also be found in the east. You can see some over here on the shores of New York and New England. Okay, let's see which of these you can identify here in this picture. We've taken away the labels now. Take a moment to see what you can spot. All right, so we've got end moraines here. We've got a terminal end moraine over on the far right, and then a recessional end moraine a bit behind it over on the left. There's the outwash, the glacial outwash flowing down these rivers. Okay, little lakes. We didn't mention these lakes right here, but these are called kettles. These are little spots where chunks of ice were left in the ground when the ice melted away, a little hole was left. If the bottom of that hole is below the water table, then you've got a kettle lake. You'll notice over here is our esker, this sinuous little trace going across the landscape. Looks like this esker ends in a delta here, probably fed into what was once a lake right in front of the glacier, something like that one there. We've got caves, and we've got drumlins. This whole area here is referred to as ground moraine. So hopefully you were able to pick out some of those features. Nice work, and thanks for your attention. This has been another smart figure.